Now I'm going to make some boxes on the corners. So if I take a look at some reference that I'm using here, you'll see that the corners here, these boxes protrude out from the rest of the framework. They stick out, they stick up and out towards the end a little bit more than the rest of this metal cage does. So we'll add that next. So what I'm going to do is select all the corner faces. And then I'll hit E to extrude them. Doesn't need to be a whole lot, just a little bit. Now that's looking pretty good, but if we look closely, we'll see that this isn't perfectly flat. And that's just the way that vertex normals are averaged out when you extrude polygons that exist at multiple angles like this. We'll have to do some manual correction of this. And the way I'll start out is I'll select all the top faces, and I'll hit S, Z, zero. That'll scale them down to zero in the Z axis. Then what I'm going to do, this is a little trick, I'll select the faces that are perpendicular to the Y axis, so the ones on the ends. Now if I hit S, Y, 0, you'll see they collapse to the center. We don't want that. So I need to change something. I'm going to change my pivot center. By default it's at median point. I'm going to change them to individual origins. That will scale these down to zero along each one of them rather than scaling them all as a group. So now if I hit S, Y, zero, you'll see they all flatten out. In hindsight, I should have also done that with the ones on the bottom. And then I'll do the same thing for the ones on the sides. and you'll see they're all flat. Brilliant! Except I'm not entirely happy with how some of this is turning out. The framework in the middle here is a little too plain, for my taste at least. So I'm going to make some changes. I'll hit Control R in order to add in some edge loops. And specifically, I'm going to add in four on each one. And I'm going to make some changes to this a bit later. So I'll add in those four for now. I'll add them into the other side. And by the way, the way I'm increasing my edge loop count here is I'm just scrolling my mouse wheel. Also remember, you have to double click. If you just click once when you move your mouse, you'll start moving the edge loops. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the edge loops on the ends, so all the ones in this cluster and all the ones in this cluster. And the quick way to do that is you hold down Alt and Shift, you will select entire edge loops. Then I'll scale them along the Y axis. However, nothing's happening because my pivot centers are still set to individual origins. So I need to set that to median point. And then I can start to scale these out. Something like right about there, maybe. And then I'll do something similar with the ones on the inside. Now I need to change my selection to faces. And a real quick way to select all of this is if I hit Z and then hold down Control and left click and drag, I can select everything within that lasso there. Two things are important when you do this. One, you have to capture the origin of the face, this little dot in the middle of them. 
And the second thing is that you need to hit Z, otherwise it won't work. It won't select the faces you can't see unless you uncheck this box right here. I find that just hitting the Z key makes things a little bit faster. Now what I need to do is I need to change my pivot centers back to individual origins and scale. Scale them down quite a bit. And then I need to scale them in the Y axis. Now you'll see our framework looks a little bit more interesting, but it's a little too high off the ground right here. So what I'll do is I'll grab those faces specifically, and then I will move them down until they cover that up. Might need to move uh, these corrugations in a little bit. So I will, to do that, if I just move the object, it'll move both of them at once. To move one and have that affect the mirror, I have to select all the faces of one and then move that in. And you'll see that affects the inside. Don't worry about this seeming overlap. We're going to cover that with a plane in a bit. Great. So now I'll add the top really quick, which is just going to be another plane. Now you may think that I should add on some corrugations on top here, but that's not entirely accurate. If we look at the reference again, you'll see that the side has very clear corrugations like this, but the top doesn't. The top just has these bumps. And I'm going to add that in later as a normal map, as opposed to modeling it in. The reason why I wanted to model the sides with some overlap is because of something we're going to be adding to the sides a little bit later, something that will cast a shadow onto them, and I want the corrugations to catch those interesting shadows. If I just did those detail with a normal map, then the shadows would not have looked as convincing. Now we're not going to add a bottom to this because this object will always be closed and it will always be resting upright. So the player will never see the bottom of it, so there's no reason to model it. Keeping that in mind, we can save on our poly count a little bit by deleting all of the bottom faces. You see that's 24 faces which adds up, since these are all quads, that adds up to 48 triangles that we're going to save by getting rid of these. So I hit X, and I have to delete specifically the faces.